Welcome, dear listeners. Today's episode delves into a hot topic that's been garnering much attention lately, creatine supplementation. Let's start by stating that creatine's benefits extend beyond just our muscles. Creatine, a natural compound found in foods like red meat and seafood, is renowned for its role in enhancing muscle strength and performance. But did you know that creatine also plays a pivotal role in our brain function? In fact, 5% of the body's creatine is located in our brain, kidneys, and liver. The discovery of creatine dates back to 1832, thanks to French chemist Michel Eugène Chevrol. He isolated creatine from animal skeletal muscle and named it after the Greek word kreas, meaning meat. Interestingly, the human body can also produce creatine. This synthesis primarily occurs in the liver, kidneys, and pancreas, involving several steps and different amino acids. In the first step, which takes place in the kidneys, the amino acids glycine and arginine react to form guanidinoacetate and ornithine. This process is facilitated by a special enzyme called arginine glycine amidinotransferase. In the next step, the guanidinoacetate is transported to the liver. There, it is converted into creatine by another enzyme, guanidinoacetate methyltransferase. A methyl group from another substance, S-adenosylmethionine, is transferred to guanidinoacetate, creating creatine. An average adult produces about 1 to 2 grams of creatine per day. This amount is sufficient to cover the body's needs, especially if creatine is also consumed through food. The endogenously produced creatine is transported in the bloodstream and mainly absorbed into muscle cells. There, it is converted into creatine phosphate, which serves as a quick source of energy for short-term, intense muscle activity. Our brains require a lot of energy to function properly, and creatine helps produce this energy quickly. It supports important brain processes such as memory and thinking. Research shows that taking creatine supplements can increase the amount of creatine in the brain. The effects of creatine on memory and cognitive performance vary. Some studies have found that creatine improves memory, especially in older adults and vegetarians. However, other studies showed no effect. A meta-analysis of 10 studies concluded that creatine supplementation improved memory performance compared to placebo, with the effect being particularly strong in older adults. Creatine deficiency can occur, but is rare and usually due to specific causes. Genetic defects, such as a deficiency in certain enzymes, such as the aforementioned guanidinoacetate methyltransferase or arginine glycine amidinotransferase, as well as problems with the transport of creatine in the body, can cause significant health problems. Vegetarians and vegans may have lower creatine levels due to their diet, but the body is able to produce creatine itself. Diseases of the kidneys or liver can also affect creatine production. In addition, an increased need during intensive physical exertion can lead to a relative deficiency. There are two known safety concerns. Creatine is converted to creatinine, and high creatinine levels may falsely indicate worsening kidney function. However, according to the International Society of Sports Nutrition, creatine does not affect kidney function. There is also no evidence that creatine causes hair loss it is more likely that starting creatine supplementation and training occurs at the same time, and the increase in testosterone levels from training promotes hair loss. Testosterone itself is not directly responsible for hair loss. The breakdown product, dihydrotestosterone, is the actual cause of genetic hair loss, androgenetic alopecia. Physical training, especially strength training and high-intensity interval training, can increase testosterone levels. However, this increase is usually temporary and does not necessarily lead to a significant increase in dihydrotestosterone levels. Increased testosterone levels could theoretically lead to an increase in dihydrotestosterone as the body converts more testosterone into dihydrotestosterone. This could occur in people who are genetically predisposed to androgenetic alopecia, accelerates hair loss. The use of anabolic steroids that artificially increase testosterone levels can lead to a significant increase in dihydrotestosterone and thus promote hair loss. However, this is a special case and is not due to natural training. There used to be concerns that creatine supplements could increase uric acid levels, 
but creatine actually appears to do the opposite and lower uric acid levels. The only consistently reported side effect is weight gain due to the increase in lean muscle mass. The most studied form of creatine is creatine monohydrate. It is inexpensive, easily absorbed, and is usually recommended in a dose of 5 grams per day. A previous method of taking an initial load of 20 grams daily is now less recommended because it can cause stomach upset. Should you take creatine? Research findings on improving cognition in younger adults are inconclusive. However, the evidence for improving muscle performance with creatine is so compelling that the International Society of Sports Nutrition has named creatine supplements as the most effective nutritional supplement for athletes to increase high-intensity performance and lean body mass. Overall, there is strong evidence for improved muscle performance and recovery, as well as emerging evidence for improved memory and cognition. We would be happy if you could tell us in the comments whether you have decided to take creatine monohydrate and what your experience has been with it. However, remember that no dietary supplement can replace a healthy lifestyle. Please note that this information is based on the latest research and is not intended as medical advice. That's it for today's episode. As always, we wish you a long, healthy, and happy life. Stay tuned for more exciting topics about health and well-being. See you next time.